The Warhammer is one of the most powerfully armed mechs ever created, Commander. Its incredible weapons loadout rivals assault mechs that are 15 or even 20 tons heavier than it. Unfortunately, misinformation from Comstar and its outdated design make it tragically one of the most misused mechs in the Inner Sphere. Let's go over everything you need to know about the Warhammer in Battletech Classic and how to use it to its maximum potential. After that, I'll show you an experimental design that adapts to the modern realities of the Secession Wars. Production year 2515, Star League Era. Name Warhammer, WHM 6R. Weight 70 tons. Faction All Inner Sphere. Role Hybrid design, ranged and battle line roles. The Warhammer is an offensive powerhouse with an answer at all range brackets. At long range, it's armed like a sniper with two Donald PPCs to punch a hole in its enemy's armor. Then, when ranges close, it can swap to a brawler with two Martel medium lasers and a Holly short range missile rack six to tear out exposed components. Lastly, for hand to hand combat and anti infantry work, it can use its two Magna small lasers and two Spurry Browning machine guns. Availability wise, the mech is one of the most common in the Inner Sphere, making up between 5.5 and 12.5% of all heavy mechs deployed by the Great Houses. Its longevity is due to two factors. Unlike many designs, which were produced out of only one or two factories during the Star League era, the Warhammer had many factories spread across both the Inner Sphere and Periphery, ensuring the design would live on during the industrial collapse of the Succession Wars. Logistically, it's also very good. The design requires on average three times less maintenance compared to other mechs at size. But while it has very good offense and logistics, the Warhammer is a bit challenging to use on the modern battlefield. And this stems from its design. It was originally a Star League era shock troop built during an age of excess. The engineers who made it were only ever tasked to create a mech with enough firepower to destroy or severely damage any mech of the same weight class or lower. The flaw here is implied. The Warhammer was not engineered with survival in mind. To meet its design requirements, it only ever needed to destroy or maim its target before going down itself. We can see this by looking at the armor and structure of the mech. Defensively, the Warhammer has some very clear issues. It has a small chance of ammunition explosion in the center and right torso, and most alarmingly, has only 10 tons of armor. The weak point of the Warhammer is its legs. It has less than a ton of armor in each leg. And that means it can only take a single PPC shot before the second can potentially start damaging internal components. This means the Warhammer has more in common with the Crusader, a missile boat with poor defense who starts by fighting in the range role before swapping over to the battle line role later in the fight. This is a very different design than a Thunderbolt or Flashman who are brawlers designed to trade blows on the front line. Despite these clear defensive issues, Commander, Comstar continues to designate the Warhammer as a brawler. While this may have been valid during the plentiful years of the Star League, where the Warhammer could be used as an expendable asset, using it in its traditional role instead of as a range mech supported by a front line will have disastrous results for our mercenary company. In order to use the Warhammer successfully, Commander, we'll need to change our tactics and use it in a different way than what was originally intended. Failure to adapt this 500-year-old design to the modern realities of the Succession Wars can be seen by looking at the events of 2876, when during the Fourth Succession War, Prince Carl Davian grouped his elite pilots into two lances of Warhammer and Riflemen, and then commanded them to fight in the traditional Star League style. While the group's combined firepower was certainly helpful at breaking through the five Cretan strongholds during the Prince's frontal assault, doing this was a disaster logistically. Without heavily armored mechs to absorb the return damage, all of the Prince's Warhammers and their pilots had to be replaced shortly thereafter. For his foolishness, Carl Davion himself was killed during the first wave of the assault. Not to worry though, the boys in the back and I have come up with a new set of tactics that adapts this Star League design so it can be used safely in our mercenary formations. We'll be going over how to pilot it properly soon, but first let's take a look at formations and variants that can better support the Warhammer. Because of its defensive issues, Commander, I feel the Warhammer is a bit risky to use in a single lance composition. I feel it's much safer to take in a 6 mech or 8 mech group, or in a headquarters unit where it can fight behind frontline allies for as long as possible. Another option is refitting our Warhammers to the Davion 6D variant. The variant drops the SRM and machine guns in order to increase its armor and shifts the mech into more of a true brawler role. This solves the defensive issues, but leaves it without a critical hit weapon. Because of its glass cannon design commander, I have to rate the Warhammer a C tier mech as an initial grade. It's usable, but flawed. While its offense is undeniably good, its defensive problems means it needs a bit more looking after than most. I suspect, however, it'll probably be graded a bit upwards in our final heavy mech tier list. I think the mech techs and I have created a variant that fixes all the issues of the Warhammer though. 
but first let's go over how to pilot the original Warhammer to its maximal potential. The Warhammer is a hybrid mech that can play both the range and battle line roles. In order to be successful, pilots should think of themselves as a fragile sniper with the unique ability to transform into a hard-hitting brawler for short periods of time. As mechs are entering the battlefield, the Warhammer should deploy in the middle of the initiative. Faster mechs, who can reposition easily, should go first, followed by the Warhammer and the frontline mechs. Because of its low leg armor, a commander should try to get the Warhammer into a position with cover to negate leg hits. Warhammers should usually be given the very best position with elevation, cover, and a good line of sight over the battlefield. As the fight starts, Warhammer pilots should run to the covered position and fire a single PPC along the way to keep themselves cold. Once in position, pilots should remain stationary and shoot three volleys of two PPCs before firing one PPC to cool a back down to zero heat. They can do even more damage by judging the speed at which the enemy is closing. If they think their target will cross over from long to their medium range bracket on the next turn, they should consider resetting their heat back to zero early by firing one PPC instead of two. This will allow it to take the next six PPC shots at a higher accuracy. A pilot's goal at this stage should be to do moderate damage while keeping its armor relatively high so it can contribute to the eventual brawl. As the battle line mechs start brawling, that is, fighting at six hexes or less, the Warhammer should look for the right time to enter the fight. The exact timing will be different for each situation, but because of the low armor on the Warhammer, it should try to only enter the brawl to help finish enemy mechs off, or during an emergency. If mechs still have very high armor, the Warhammer should continue to fight in the range roll, using its PPCs to punch holes into enemy armor until a few key locations become exposed. When pilots do decide to enter the brawl, heat management is quite simple. The Warhammer can fire a PPC and all of its brawl weapons for a net gain of two heat, slowly raising its heat over the course of a fight. Pilots can regulate their heat by choosing when to fire the second medium laser. If this information was helpful to you, Commander, please subscribe to this channel for more tactical insights. Now let's go over to the mech bay and I'll show you a simple refit that makes the Warhammer much more usable for us mercenaries. We're designating this experimental Warhammer WH Slime X1 and naming it Cavill. We're dropping a medium laser, downgrading the SRM-6 to an SRM-4, swapping the small lasers to machine guns, and reducing the amount of machine gun ammo to half a ton. This allows us to increase armor by 25%. The refit solves the Warhammer's defensive issues while still retaining its identity of a mech with high damage and a weapon for all ranges. This version of the Warhammer should play similar to the original, but be much more willing to close the melee range where it can put its four machine guns to work. I know you also mentioned you were interested in Black Widow's Warhammer Commander, and while most sources indicate she pilots a normal Warhammer 6R, there have been a few rumors going around that our mech has actually been upgraded with Starlink technology. It'll be impossible for us to know for sure, unless somehow we can scan it ourselves, but I've included one possible loadout of our Warhammer here. Yeah, we ran out of